Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In this video, we're going to be talking about polyatomic ions and how they relate to ionic compounds. So if you remember in the last video, we talked about how to combine ionic compounds. And if you remember the way we do that is, here's the periodic table. If I wanted to add lithium and fluorine, for instance, Li is one positive, fluorine is one minus, the charges cancel out so I don't have to do anything and it just creates LIF when I combine them together. That's basically a summary of what we did last time. But now today, we're gonna to take it up a notch and we're going to look at the polyatomic ions and it says here in this chart to memorize. The reason why typically we like to memorize these is because we use them so much. A lot of chemistry classes, the teacher will force you to memorize them. Sometimes you get an equation sheet, depends on your particular situation. But either way, we're gonna be using the chart today to help us, we're gonna have the training wheels on and here's what you need to know. Let's just look at one of these. It doesn't matter which one. Let's look at nitrate right here. NO2 minus. As you can tell, this is a lot more than one element. Like obviously nitrogen and oxygen is more than one element. But the fact that it has the minus next to it means that we can treat it just like any other element on the periodic table that is one minus. Like for instance, fluorine is one minus. What I'm saying is we can treat nitrite, NO2 minus, exactly the same as we would treat fluorine minus. So in other words, if I wanted to combine lithium and nitrite, well, lithium is one plus, NO2 is one minus, these combine together and I can just write Li, NO2, and since the charge is balanced, I don't need any more subscripts to multiply by, and that's our answer. Now, it does get a lot more tricky than that, so let's go ahead and look at some examples right now. My first example, I want to combine nitrate with potassium. I wanna combine them to form an ionic compound. What is the formula gonna be for that? So first, nitrate is NO3 minus, and if you don't believe me, look at the table. Nitrate is right below nitrite, it's NO3 minus. And then potassium on the periodic table is right here, and that's in the first group, which means it's gonna form one plus in its ion form. So it's K plus and NO3 minus. When we combine these, I know I haven't said this yet, but when we combine these, you need to put the positive first. That means if you write NO3K, this is wrong, you gotta put the K first, that's the rule. So it's K NO3. And the name of this would be called potassium nitrate, and there's the answer. So this was honestly a pretty easy example. Now let's look at a harder one. Now let's say I wanna combine hydrogen H and carbonate, which if you look at the ionic compounds list, that's CO3 two minus. We know hydrogen on the periodic table is group one, so that's just H plus. And now when I wanna combine these, I can't write HCO3 like this because the charges are not balanced right now. This one's two minus, this one's one plus. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna multiply the hydrogen by two by putting a little two in the subscript there and now we're done. This is perfect. Notice I'm not putting the charges. You never put the charges in the final answer for an ionic compound. You just ignore them. And then the name of this would be called hydrogen carbonate. You'll notice that for the polyatomic ion names, you don't put IDE like we did, for instance, with fluoride or bromide or iodide. You just keep the name, so that's nice. And now let's look at one more example. This will be the hardest one of all. Let's say I wanna combine ammonium and sulfate. And by the way, you can combine two from the polyatomic ion list. And that's because the only one that's positive is ammonium, NH4+, right here. Which means that if you combine any of these, nitrate, sulfate, hydroxide, phosphate, all of these can only combine with ammonium because ammonium is the only one that's positive on the list. And that's true for just about any chemistry class you could take. So there's ammonium. Sulfate is right there, SO4, 2 minus. So that means ammonium is NH4 plus, sulfate is SO4 two minus. And again, if I wanna make these balance out, 
Well, I got to multiply NH4 by 2 because I need the charges to balance. And here's what you do if you multiply a compound by 2. You don't just write NH4 2 like this. You don't combine the 4 and the 2 to make an 8 either. What you have to do is, just like in math with the distributive property, you put it in the parentheses and then put a 2 down here. And now we can just write sulfate SO4. Again, don't write the charges. And there is our answer. And literally the name is ammonium sulfate. I'm not even going to bother writing it. I think it's pretty straightforward. But that's it for that one. And now let's do one more. I encourage you to pause the video. Try it on your own. But I want to combine phosphate and calcium, Ca. So go ahead, pause the video, try this one on your own. Here's the list of polyatomic ions, find phosphate, and then here's the periodic table, go ahead and find calcium, and unpause the video whenever you're ready to see the solution. So here's what we're gonna do. First, phosphate is PO4 three minus, and calcium, since it's group two, is gonna become two plus, now if I want to balance these, hopefully you realize that you have to multiply phosphate by 2 and multiply calcium by 3. That's going to make them both 6 plus and 6 minus, so they cancel each other out for the charges. But how do I write that? Well remember, first you got to write calcium first. I tried to trick you there. You got to write calcium first, and since it's times 3, it gets a little 3 subscript at the bottom. And then when I write phosphate, I have to put it in parentheses because the whole thing needs to be multiplied by two, so it gets the two right there outside the parentheses. And there's our answer for the empirical formula, and if you wanna give it a name, we would just call it calcium phosphate, just like that. And yeah, that's gonna do it. Hopefully you've got some good examples now, you know what to do. Again, I would memorize those polyatomic ion lists that I provided above, I think it'd be very helpful. Thank you all for watching. And I hope to see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.